Welcome to Friday Night's Video and our Master Series. This is the 111th video in our Master Series, and I do believe the 8th video in our group mixing phase. So basically, in the last video, we kind of finished up dealing with when we were going mixing the harmonies into the vocals. So now, basically, we've went through and checked everything, and we're pretty happy with it. And we've gone on to the next thing. So let's say that we've gone on to the guitar. So we go through the same procedure that we did in the last you know, step. And then we bring that guitar up in there again. And okay, there it is. All right. So now once we've done that, we go through and we start fine tuning. Okay, right there. That could be up a little bit. That could be up a little bit there. Over here, rest right there. It could be down a little bit. And I got one chord here, a note or something that could be up just a little bit, you know, and da 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 da. You know, fine tuning like that. Now, once we get to that point there, that the the what the procedure normally that I do is I'll go back to the thing sitting on the very top of everything. And then I'll go through and say, well, what's going on? Well, now that the guitar is in there, now this right here needs to be boosted up a little bit. And with the guitar in there, that this this sounds, well, right here, it sounds right there a little bit loud. And it's not blending well enough right there. And over in here, it's real obvious that this little phrase here needs to go up a little bit. And then, okay, that sounds pretty good. You know, then I go back into here, and then I go to the harmony. So what happened? Well, I adjusted that up a little bit, so I, yeah, I need to bring that up just a hair with that. Well, that sounds good. And this one over here, where I brought that up a little bit, no, well, maybe just a hair. And then for some reason, with the guitar there, right here on this part, on that harmony, that needs to go up just a little bit. So I'm fine-tuning it. That was the top layer, the layer underneath it, and okay, that's good, I go back to the guitar. So then I'm listening to the guitar again, and I go, okay, I'll listen to it again. Now there's adjustments, how's that sound? And then I'll listen to it again, and I might have to fine tune a bit more. That right in there, okay, I need to bring that down a little bit, I need to do a little something over there. That one note right here, for some reason, that one note could be a little bit louder, because it's right before it hits this spot right here on that main vocal and it's just kind of like an intro bam bam you know it's like bam bam and so i'm gonna turn that up just a little bit fine tuning that all right yeah that sounds really good so we've done that step we've mixed that in there and it sounds great so we go back into our mixing we do the same thing that we did when we did the harmonies so we go through and we've done some high low pass filtering cutting out any unneeded content gone through there and boosted anything we thought we needed going along the equal loudness contour first where it says attenuating boost and oh yeah all right that sounds much better you know and oh wait a minute i've got that one part on the guitar now i go back over here and start soloing these you know which one which one this one this one's having an issue. So, I mean, it's like, what does it sound like it needs? And I don't need a high low pass filter and even like, I already checked that and that's good to go. But on this one, it could use a little bit of some upper end boost or something. You know, something's going on there. And yeah, okay, now, now I unsolo it and, you know, listen to the rest of the ones. Yeah, that sounds great. All right, then I go back into here. Now that I've done that, then I go do the same thing again with the other tracks so now that i've mixed them in i've gone through that procedure now i'm going to go back to that very front vocal and i'll listen to it now how does it sound now you know i'm not listening i need to do any high low pass filtering on it but you know it could use well it kind of a little bit of an upper end boost right there you know the upper end i can give it a little bit of air right there now that sounds pretty good and right over here i'm getting this a little bit of how's that sound i solo it by itself then listen to it with the guitar and that and then you know with all three of them and yeah right there that needs to be cut out just a little bit right there yeah that sounds much better there we go all right and then i go to the harmonies do i need to do any work there you know i mean it's like i don't really probably need to do any more high low pass filtering but i'll check it and see if i need a high low pass filter out any more of that you know and okay no no i don't need to fuss with that too much but the other EQ, do I need that? Yeah, again, that could get a little bit boost in the upper end a little bit right there. Like I did the upper vocals just now, or the out front vocals. And I'm good to go. Okay, yeah, now that sounds good. And then I go back to the guitar. Now I've done that work, how's that sound? Did that affect anything? Do I need to go in there and fuss with the EQ on there? Do I need to go back to any of those individual tracks and fuss with them at all? You know, does 
any of them sound funky or something's not sounding right, you know, and then da-da-da, back and forth, back and forth, checking it on my meters, go through and check it on the meters like we talked about, and looking at it real well, checking my level, going out to my leveling bus, you know, check it on my pull-out, my leveling, my level meter, you know, and make sure that everything's okay, see what my levels are right now, how much headroom I got, make sure I got enough headroom still, and things like that, and then, okay, I'm done. Okay, so now we've gone through and we've mixed, we've brought the out front vocal in, we brought the sport track harmonies under it, we've brought the guitar into it, and then we've gone through this procedure. You know, three steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, and one step back. Now, this may sound complicated, but the better you get at it, your workflow will flow along. And it won't take you long. You have how many buses here? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buses. And I don't know how many tracks. This is a fairly, a fairly average size, you know, production. I mean, you know, I mean, there's not many that many tracks. There's actually quite a few. This is saying 77 tracks on here. That's pretty good size. Does that make sense? I mean, that's a lot of tracks. Not too many buses, but quite a few tracks. You know, and you do that one step at a time. It sounds like a lot, but if you do that step procedural like that, that one step at a time. So then the basic next thing is you just go right on to the next thing. Now, the next thing might be like you got the bass here because the guitar is off to the left and the bass is off to the right. So you're going to have to deal with it like that, bringing it up to those same levels and do the same procedures we said and then go through here all the way through them one step at a time doing that same routine. And you will find, you know, that most of the time that that should fix any problems you're having. Really looking at your meters, really looking at your, your you know, listening well. And every track you go to, as you go through, put on your headphones and listen for a minute with your headphones. I mean, really do because it's, it can really help you fine tune and find pinpoint problems and issues that you may not hear as well through your monitors. So throw them on, you know, as you go through that, check it, check it all with your headphones. Yeah, yeah, go back and listen. How's that sound with the headphones? How's it sound with the monitors, the headphones, monitors? Yeah, all right, cool. And that step procedure will just kind of carry you along. And then you go do the same thing with the next track. Now, the only difference here that as you go along with this is if you do that every time, you go to the next track and then go to that top track, work your way back, and then do any repairs you need to do there, any equalization work or anything like that, then go back to that top track, do any work you might need to do on that with equalization or whatever, one step at a time, back to that, then see that again, and then just work along like that. You will, you will be amazed at how much better your mixes will sound. Now, the only exception to the rule here is the drums. Now, the drums, you go through this procedure that it's very likely with drums or anything similar to the drums that you may find yourself having to go in there and deal with things on individual. I got to turn this one up a little bit. I got to bring that one down a little bit. I have to lie a little past filter a little bit there or something. And I got to boost a little bit here. You know, I got to bring some air into my ride and drop some low end over here or boost the low end a little bit. And you might find yourself drums sometimes will just take a little bit longer because you've got a pretty good sized group. <clears throat> and it's not like they're the same instrument. You know, you've got a kick drum, a snare drum, and they're percussion. They're not musical, but they're very different sounding. So as you go through that procedure, be, just be prepared to spend more time on your drums because as you go through that, you will find yourself going back and checking the kick drum. How's that sound? Do I need to do some work on it? Do I need to go do some work on the snare? Do I need to do some work on that? Drums are normally about the last thing I do. But and then go back through one at a time. Do I need to do some work on that? Da, da, da. Do I need to turn it up, turn it down a little bit? Do I need to do some equalization work on it? What do I need to do? Drums are just a little time consuming because it's like a symphony of percussion. Does that make sense? So you really have to deal with that that way. Like it's strings and a brass section and a wind section that have different characteristics, but it's percussion. Not only is it not musical, but it has that same you know, an orchestra of percussion kind of mentality, but they're very different to deal with. And so you just spend a little more time on them so that you do a good job when you're doing them. 
and then just go through the same procedure of stepping back go back i need to refine i gotta go back as i've done that and i go okay now i've done my you know i've done that and i go down to here i get to my drums and then i'm fine-tuned i'm you know getting a basic level or whatever and then fine-tuning things i go back to the original tracks fuss with stuff go into here i need to turn that down a bit i've turned the kick drum up a little bit but all of it needs to go up a little bit right there and da 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 and sometimes it'll be individual hits that you can deal with like you've got a kick drum that's just hitting right there and you don't even have to go back to the original tracks or anything you can just hit your automation there and bring it down a little bit or up a little bit or something like that they're just a little more time consuming and just deal with them like they're a symphony of percussion you know that it's like having a you know a uh, uh, you know, a string section and a, and a brass section and woodwind section all in one subgroup, but it's percussion. And they all have their own characteristics that you have to deal with to make them work well in the mix and deal with them one instrument at a time. The kick drum is a separate instrument. The snare is a separate instrument. You listen to them on a whole, but go back to them one at a time and deal with them like we've been dealing with these subgroups that off the buses that we have so far. And it's just a little bit more time consuming. So at this point, that once you do that routine and you get all the way through and you spent your time on your drums and you're done and you basically think that you're done, that you should at this point have a pretty good mix of that, you know, because you it's really that three steps forward and one step back routine is really going to help you fine tune. And it and w until you get used to it, doing a good job of it, that it may seem very time consuming to you, but it really isn't that time consuming. Now, at this point, that it's a really good time to address your spatialization. So, you know, getting all your spatialization presets on that we talked about, getting them on and checking them. You know, how's that sound? You know, go through, and at this point, normally I'll go through and I'll listen to just the vocals. And I go, all right, yeah, well, I'm before I wind that up a little bit. So I'm going to leave it alone, and I'll add the harmonies in there. And it's like, okay, it sounds good. It really sounds like the out front vocals make, need some more. So I'll make a note of it real quick, and then I'll start adding in the guitar, and then I'll add in the bass and the piano and the strings, you know, whatever in line going from front to back. And then going and adjust, say, nah, now that I, I got them together and I've listened to them, yeah, the out front vocal could use a little bit more. So I'm going to go kick that up a little bit. I'm going to put that at four there. And I don't think it needs any more echo effect. I'll try. I'll put that at four there, see how that sounds. Nope, that's a little bit much. I'll bring that back down to three. Yeah, that sounds great. And then you just kind of jump around. You know, as you go through there and you mix those two together, then you add the next one and then check your presets. You know, check that spatial and print, pretty go on to the next one, then go back to the first one. That could use a little more. No, no, yeah, no, da, da, da. Okay, good. On to the next one. Okay, that sounds good. I think that sounds good. Then go back. Do that need some adjustment? That need adjustment? That need adjustment? That need adjustment? Now, now, does that need adjustment? Now that I do that. Oh, yeah. Now that I fixed that a little bit, I need to bring this one down a little bit. Then go on to the next one and do the same procedure over and over. Like I said, it's a little time consuming, but it can cause you to do a really good job. So basically, that's about it. You should be able to do a pretty good mix like that and come out with something that sounds pretty dang good. So we're going to address going to the next movement and dealing with that in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly hope in the last couple of videos that you really take the time to make some notes about that, work out some kind of workflow to start trying to practice with that, and really <clears throat> trust me on that, that it will really help your mix. And when you get a good workflow going, you will flow along and you will find that you will not miss little issues and you will do a much better job on your mix and come out with sounding with something, come out with something that sounds really nice. Now just remember that some of the automation we did wasn't like drawing. You may get in there and start wanting to do like drawing automation, freehand automation on things. Does that make sense? And you'll have to break this down to whatever it is so you can draw nice clean automation going along there because sometimes some automation gets you know really super fine-tuned and but that's a matter of your ear how well you can hear the better you get the more that you will fine-tune your work so 
peace, hope, love. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next video when we talk about some transitions.